Hey, welcome back to 26 Different Ways to Draw a Letter, brought to you by Secura. My name is Lisa, I'm your host for today and every day on this channel, and we're gonna do the letter J today. Before we dive in, I just want to remind you that fun eats perfection for breakfast. It does, it really does. Because if you have fun while you draw, if you skip the perfection and just have fun, you will gain access to the creativity that is already residing within you. Look, creativity isn't something that you have to get from outside. You already have it. You just need access to it. And that is why this exercise is so brilliant. It helps you open those gates um, by having fun. Okay, besides fun, you also need a couple of pens. I use the Secura Pigma Micron Fineliners and a piece of paper, or you can download the practice sheet. Yada yada, you know that by now, right? The link is in the description to this video. Uh, either way, um, remember having fun. Perfection doesn't live here. Okay, good. Let it check. Okay, and the tools for the fun stuff that we're gonna do are three today. I brought the size eight, size 10, and size 12 of my Secura Pigma Microns. And here is the shape that we're gonna work with. Letter J, both straight and bent. Okay, first of all, I'm thinking a shape that is almost like some sort of, I don't know, banner perhaps like that and we I also have to do a script version of course I'm thinking a simpler script J like this just adding a little bit of extra thickness to the downstroke you know the full calligraphy method hmm and also, you know, if you sort of, oh, look, it almost looks like a, a moon or a banana, but I was thinking almost like a hammock. So I'm just gonna fill this shape in with more lines. I'm using the size eight now uh, for the little bit more detailed or thinner line lines work and filling it all up and one more there you go and okay so the script J we had the down stroke come all thick in this J, I'm gonna do the opposite. So, hey, it almost looks like a flag, some kind of a golf flag or something. Um, anyway, so <clears throat> in this J, the horizontal lines are thicker instead of the vertical ones. Why is that? Well, it's because that's the way I wanted it. So, next up I'm thinking a thicker J with a slightly, oh, let me see. So here's the shape and I'm gonna make it thicker and a little bit thinner there and thicker. At, so this J is a little bit thicker at the ends, as you can see, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm thinking like a huge make that a huge circle like that like this big big sort of serif and there now i'm switching to size 12 only because it's thicker 
uh, which makes the filling in a little bit quicker. There and this one as well. So as you can see perhaps I've been playing with the letter and emphasizing different parts of it okay in those in those shapes and forms that I've drawn up until now. There. A heavy foot on that J. Okay, perhaps this one will have a lighter foot. I'm still using the size 12 as you can see because I you know, still have it in my hand. Yeah, there is a J. That, if you know it's a J, you can see it. It's, it's a J, right? And here comes the slab's ribs. A little bit wonky and imperfect just the way I like them. And this one is a hook. I don't know what it's called. Is it called a fishing hook? Is it? In Sweden it is. Only in Swedish, of course, but... Um, it's an obvious J. And here is another one that almost like tying a knot or something. I'm thinking that this is going to go right and it's ending there and the back of itself. There. And because the last part here goes behind, I'm gonna like emphasize that by drawing tiny little lines that will give the illusion of a little bit of shadow. Okay, script, script, script coming up. A lot of curls, a lot of, I'm not sure if you're following. Ooh, there. And this needs a little bit of touching up and I also need it to be a little bit, it was too thin and skinny, so I need to emphasize the lines a little bit. So I'm just filling it in, uh, making them thicker here and there. Now this sort of detailed touch-up work I can do forever. Uh, sometimes the hardest part is actually knowing when to stop because you can go on and on and on and on. Um, only the lines will get thicker and thicker as you go so you need to stop some time like before you destroy the whole letter form. And up there, trying to create some sort of balance there. And yeah. Okay, that'll have to do. Okay, block letter. Uh, I was thinking about filling it in with like a, with thin lines. So the shape first, nothing spectacular about that. Here we go grabbing the size 8 and making thin lines that are close together. You know how I've discussed this before, it's a really good penmanship exercise. Drawing thin lines that are very close to each other but don't collide, right? So each need their own lane and they need to stay in their own lane, even if they are driving very, very close to one another. It's a very good exercise. The hardest part about this one for me is when I draw like this, when I draw my straight lines horizontal. It's hard for my hand, that is why I do it. You can also see that the lines are not quite as straight as when I draw them from up and down, like I do now. It's easier for me. And the whole point of this exercise, among others, are to step out of the comfort zone and actually do the thing that is hard or harder or doesn't come as easy for you anyway. Okay. Moving on to, I'm thinking I'm going to do a bigger one now. Big letters are also kind of 
challenging because your hand can only reach so far on the paper, right? So that is that is a yeah, perfectly good reason to draw big letters. Demands more of your muscles in your hand of their flexibility and also uh, of their strength and their steadiness. So as you can see, perhaps I am drawing a shade on this letter and grabbing the size 12 to fill that one out with black. And while we're on the subject of shade, you don't always have to put them on the right side of the letter like I do here. Uh, on the contrary, uh, many times it's actually recommended that you put them on the left side of the letter. I'll explain why a little bit later. Okay, so the shade is done here and I am making myself a very, very soft and bubbly and thick J there and some highlights. Almost looks like a cashew nut. Um, and okay, doing a J here with tiny, tiny little like edgy lines. Also a very good exercise. Not only like zigzag, but you really try to make small lines in different directions. So it almost looks like the letter J has been torn out of thick paper or I don't know, something else. Metal, perhaps. You can tear a letter from metal. Anyways, moving on and grabbing the size 8 so I can make a J out of like tiny sticks. Okay, there's one, here comes the other. It's like if you had a bunch of straight sticks and you just place them on the floor. to make them look like the letter J. There, and we're gonna need um, perhaps one more. Yeah, I'm gonna do one more here. A short one. There. Stick J. Mm, and now I need a shabby juicy one. Let's see. Here is the outer shape. That ending in some sort of... Oh, there. Up and in. There. And while I'm gonna fill this in with black, I can tell you what I meant about putting shade to the left side of the letter because if you consider the letters E, F, K, R, for example, they got all this thing going on to the right side of the stem. So while on the left side there's just a stem straight line, that makes it much easier to draw shade on the left side of those letters. So if I may suggest anything it would be that you alter the shade so one day you do it to the left of the letter and the other one to the right so you don't get stuck in your head in only one way uh, okay so this is a J made up of I don't know <laughs> a bunch of lines that almost look a little bit angry or frustrated or I don't know 
That one must think. Um, there. Yeah. So there and a little bit. Mm, yeah. Um, hmm. And now I just want to do a plain J with nice and curvy and round ends and form like that not a single sharp corner inside here drawing outlines which we know by now is also a very good practice and then filling it in keeping the center of the J white and I'm still using size 8 here the other ones would be too big and there okay um this one will be uh, well it won't be very exceptional like you can see it's not but i'll frame it with a giant like splash or whatever you like to call it so the j will make some impact anyways not because of how it looks but because of the frame i'm placing it in Okay, so remember the first J I did? I told you that it was like a banner J. Now this one is almost like a development of that. This is going to be a ribbon J. So first I draw, you see two parallel J's. Then I connect them here in the bottom and doing this sort of end here on each and filling one side of the ribbon with black like that and there rip and chain okay so next up I'm thinking yeah I'm thinking sharp edges I really like these kind of letters I, but you can tell because I draw them a lot but grabbing this no the size eight and doing these fine lines as a way of drawing shade on the letter there and i think i'm gonna do the other sides too so like the middle of the letter is highlighted which makes the letter feel a little bit bent or bubbly okay four ones left I think yeah so this is I'm not sure this is gonna work probably not uh, but I am drawing a brush here so there's the metal and the bristles will obviously be bent that way. Yeah. Huh. Looks like some kind of mop. But yeah. A mop or a brush, I don't care what you call it. It is a J. Uh, there. <laughs> yeah. Sort of. Mm. and this one is like I wanted to I want to make the stem hefty and just a tiny tiny little bit of a hook there so once again playing with the perspective or the proportions rather in one letter can like create some really fun letter forms and 
while I'm doing this, I also am contemplating. I think I only have two more to go. Yeah, I think so. So I'm gonna make a J that is filled with um, square, or not only square. Well, um, let me show you. Outline first, ordinary block letter, and inside I'm just gonna almost looks like a um, slice, slice of an orange. Wow. Um, I'm just gonna fill it in with these geometrical shapes that are going almost all the way out to the outline of the J. I could have skipped the outline. I could have just... Oh well, that'll be for another series. And the last one I wanted to make, you know, a lot of lines. So first of all, emphasizing the downstroke in this J by drawing lines and I'm drawing kind of thick lines. I'm using the size 10 as you can see. More lines here, there and also up here. So all the lines are vertical. And this chair. There! That is it, my friends. This is 26 ways to draw the letter J. Thanks for watching. See you next week.